Cool. Ronan Amikai, welcome to the show. Thank you for having time. How are you and your family? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. You're welcome. Ronan, I heard so many interesting stories of how you deal with COVID-19. Um, remote, uh, disinfection, digitization. Uh, tell people how have you uh, experienced the virus. What are you doing with your business? Okay. First of all, as most of the control activity, that the com commercial activity, we lost some of our customer in the last two months. We lost around 10 to 15, maybe even more than 15, a uh, regular monthly-based customer. So mm -hmm. this was the hard part because most of them closed their business, hotels, restaurants, um, office buildings, you know, a lot of that we lost. Yeah. But from the other side, we got two interesting uh, customers. First of all, we got a lot of disinfectant work. Uh, as we are PCOs and we have the equipment and we had, we have actually a disinfection, a very small disinfection department in our company. Mostly was uh, able to, was working with the food industry, mm -hmm. you know, against the salmonella and listeria. Mm -hmm. uh, we took the equipment, we took the people, and we moved to uh, uh, move to give a service uh, against coronavirus. Mm -hmm. We find good products, especially from the U.S. As nobody have any experience how to do this disinfection in uh, in the new world, in offices, in banks. Yeah. in commercial buildings, because we never did disinfection in this area, uh, we copied the EPA list of products that are supposed to be good against coronavirus, what we call the N list, the EPA N list, and we started to work with this. The first shipping uh, of the disinfection was by air, mm -hmm. so the cost was very, very high, but now we start to get uh, containers uh, that were shipped to us, ocean freight, so we can get a better pricing and get the, and giving a, a a lower pricing level of disinfection. We were focusing on what came actually. It's a, something new for us. We start to work in airplane. We're doing most of the airplanes that are coming to Israel mm -hmm. uh, or leaving Israel. Even though Israel was one of the first countries that closed borders uh, much earlier than anyone else, before the end of February, we already closed borders. We still have a lot of uh, transportation, especially cargo, mm -hmm. and we're disinfecting the plane. We build teams that are sitting in the airports and able to disinfect in very uh, close circle, a much or, a very short time from getting the order to doing it. And lately, we upgrade our equipment to be a better equipment. We start with you know regular pest control equipment, you will be disinfected, and now we are working on uh, ultra ultra static. Guns, spraying guns that are coming from the U.S. Nice. and using Wischmeyer technology, they have a beautiful uh, sprayer that is battery operated with a with a fan that able to. Uh, we have to have a nozzle that can give you a ULV. Uh -huh. So you can distribute further into large rooms. Yeah, we can do, and also we can go with smaller team. When we start to do disinfection, ah. because we use the electric wire. And everything has to be yeah. wired. It took us at least two to three people as a team to do uh, even a small job. Now we start to work as a single uh, operators. And because they don't have to carry any uh, ele electric wire, and so they're very flexible, mm -hmm. we're able to do. And we are focusing on commercial accounts as we did before. We're not doing uh, domestic, even though we're getting some uh, some. There's, there's some inquiry from the from the private sector. You know, people don't want to do houses. Um, so we're doing a lot of government, uh, military. We're doing a lot of hotels, um, coronavirus hotel. Israeli copy, Israeli copy the Chinese system. Yeah, tell people what are they doing? Yeah, what they did, they're taking two kind of people. They're taking sick people from uh, <coughs> cities and neighborhood that are having a high level of uh, sick people in the neighborhood and separate them from the sick area and moving them to hotels. Uh, we're talking about light uh, sick and people that doesn't have a lot of symptoms yes. and put them in hotels. The hotels are like a quarantine hotels. And what we do, uh, so they're putting them in, in the hotels and they have doctors over there and they allow them to, uh, to get well in, in an easy form without uh, disinfecting other people. Um, the issue is that our business is uh, it's like hotel they have check in and check out mm. so when they checking out the hotel the room after two weeks after a week that are getting better we are coming and disinfecting the room so they can get a new customer to the room 
Nice. Uh, it started with two hotels, only with two hotels, and now it's above, I think, above 20, 30 hotels already in the country. Um, so this so is one thing. What and the other part is people that got, got coming overseas. If someone wants to fly to Israel, mm -hmm. he has to stay. There's not an option. He has to stay in one of these hotels. They have two kinds of hotels. They have sick people hotel, like what they call the coronavirus hotel, and they have people that are not sick but have to be, uh, you know, separate for at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're taking them by buses from the from the airport, no more Uber, <laughs> and <laughs> taking them <laughs> and by buses to specific hotels that they have to stay there for two weeks before they can go back to their people, to, you know, to their family and everything. Uh, so uh, the coronavirus is hard to say, uh, but they give us a lot of work, uh, and it seems like that it's going to stay with us for a long time. So uh, we actually moved some of our technician to be in this the coronavirus department. And we're actually going to get more people to that uh, because from the long run, I believe that uh, this infection is going to stay with us. And uh, this is also built... my thesis. Uh, and it's a very uh, strong thesis uh, because people have, of course, fear. But I think it's uh, uh, the probability that Corona is going to, or the way we are locked down right now, that we are operating right now, working remote right now, is going to stay with us uh, for a longer okay. period of time, like one year, two years, maybe even three years. The probability is not that low. So um, what I would love to do, people don't know that we, you and I, we had a discussion earlier this year when we met personally and did a, a video interview, which is going to come out in, in a long podcast format where we talked a lot about digitization. So I know you are one of the pioneers internationally known for digitization, digital traps, you know, any sort of solution for pest control. Mm -hmm. So you have a very special use case because I know that with your, with your business, uh, you have a lot of digital traps in use. What did that do as a benefit for you? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, we see remote monitoring as a huge advantage as a pest control operators because as most of the customers that, that decide to uh, stop taking pest control uh, services, whenever we have remote system over there, it stays and they're paying for that. It's they're paying like for that. Yeah, they, they, they're not paying for the regular service, but they're paying from the monthly fee that we're charging them per, nice. per station. Yeah. And, and, and actually, we, the only business that is growing now is installing remote system. It's not in a huge number, of course. It's not People mm -hmm. are not that desperate to remote and control. But there are two things that are coming together. First of all, because of all this closure of the, of the restaurant and all the, all, all the business that are having uh, food and garbage area, that was usually the places that rodents have to be able to feed over there, Mm. And not what's happening that because they don't have where to feed, they're starting mm. to storm and get into other places. Mm. Uh, yeah. I read a lot of articles what happened in the U.S. with that. Yeah. We don't see that in huge number here in Israel, but we have at least two shopping malls that we start to get prob rodent problem around them because the rodents are looking for food. And, uh, and we install uh, some system over there. But as I said, the good thing about remote monitoring that is customer is able to understand that this service is allowing him to get a basic or a regular service remotely without having to ask us to come. Today to uh, just a minute, uh, phone case. Today to get uh, uh, to uh, come to a service in most of the places in Israel, you have to uh, uh, you really have to focus on. Uh, on, 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 on scheduling a specific meeting with a specific person in the factory or in the office or in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, the remote system is allowing us to actually keeping them on low level, but you know, rodent control is to continue all the time. And we have a catch, we are sending technician with, their, with scheduling with them and it's working. I cannot say that it's 100% all the customer understand that and is willing to pay. Mm -hmm. but the numbers are much, much, much better than the regular pest control. And I think if we're looking for a little bit into the future, if we were looking to get, uh, to give a good reason why to use remote monitoring, this epidemic is actually showing us that it's not just because it's faster, it's not just because it's uh, maybe makes sense from financial point of view, it's actually a saving system that allows us to continue to control problems even while we're not there. And this is the first time ever that we're actually not there. 
Yeah. And so, you as a business owner, you have a continuous flow of income, which for some exactly. businesses, if you're operating in bars and restaurants, you have no in income anymore. No, no doubt. No Cash kidding. flow is, is the king in, is the king of our, on every business, especially private, the fiber sector, because without that, we don't able to run anything. Yeah. And it's giving us, it's giving us two things. It's a cash flow thing, but it's also giving us the connection with the customer. Mm. And we're not losing this connection. And as you know, cool. pest control is very personal service. Yes. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a person to person business. And if you're not able to continue this person to person, you will lose that person. Mm. And now we, get, we, we, we can send them, we have an alert. We have a rodent in your restaurant. Mm -hmm. We send it to someone. I can tell you also that some of the restaurants that we're working with that are in shutdown, we're not charging them for this coming, sending someone to do that. It's, they're only paying for the monthly fee. This is a, it's a low, mm -hmm. it's a low income. It's also a very small expense from their side. So, mm -hmm. so I think that remote monitoring as, a, as, as other remote services mm -hmm. like Zoom that we're doing now that a lot of companies, uh, a lot of uh, educational uh, in, uh, institutes are using this kind mm -hmm. of remote services. Yeah. Um, I think that remote pest control is going to be part of this wave that's going to be continued yeah. and getting higher and higher after this epidemic will go away. And, and as we know, it's not going to go away. So the, the alert is there. But I mm -hmm. think that remote monitoring, is, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, as we, you, you and I say, it's not the future, it's the present. But it will go uh, in bigger number in, in, in the future yeah. because, I, because it, it is something that people need. Yeah. And, yeah. For me, it's really great to hear that from you as an entrepreneur because I speak with pest control, with pest managers every day as you yourself as well. And um, I often have um, a problematic uh, a scheme in which people uh, have fear um, towards the investment of digital pest control devices because they are, of course, more expensive. So. For me, I think it's very valuable for everybody that is listening is that there is another perspective on these costs. I mean, they're capital costs, uh, but they, uh, you know, once paid off, of course, as an entrepreneur, you always have risks, right? Uh, dividend and risks are very close knitted uh, companions. So I think if you are committed for a long term um, uh, um, yeah, success of your business, you should indeed consider digital uh, if that's what you're saying. And I, I would definitely agree. I think that digital is not an extra anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very, very uh, basic system, that a very, very basic service you're going to get when give because it's now making sense. You know, it's all the time we have to explain right. why you need remote. Now they understand why they need remote. And, um, right. yeah, no doubt that, uh, as we know, both of us know that we ca we're here to stay. We're here to stay, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, for me personally, I want to I wanna, uh, ask you two more things. Um, you know, does the perception of pest control change in your eyes? Because, you know, everybody that has uh, had a hip clothing manufacturing brand or whatsoever is now having huge cash flow or business issues. Um, and, and us pest controllers are um, uh, considered as key industry and con as relevant industry and can still consider to keep on working. What, what did that change in your, in your company or for you as an insider? Um, I mean, for you, it was always a, a, a business that you were have uh, been passionate about. But what do you think will that do to pest control as a branding and perception of our sector and the value it brings? I, 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 I can only say what is happening. In Israel, we are in the, we are in the exit uh, uh, strategy now. We're starting to open business in Israel because yeah. we have a very low rate of death and other. So the business are opening, and one of the first things that we are actually uh, feeling that we coming, we taking back businesses. People are asking, so people see us as a vital services. People see pest control is one of the first things that are starting back, and we just as it, we lost just in number, we lost, uh, we closed, we uh, we froze, we freeze a seventeen hundred customer as on March and April, including restaurant as I said, a lot of business. From, from they open Israel, start open Israel only on last Sunday, and mm -hmm. from last Sunday to today, we already got two, more more than two hundred customers just start to come back. Nobody is dealing with uh, when someone is opening his business, especially in the food industry, especially in the restaurant, you know, fast food and that. They're taking us as one of the first services is coming back. So wow. I think uh, people see. I think people see pest control 
as a vital uh, service. And I think that also the, the, the disinfection that was always kind of a narrow, uh, kind of a, 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 a kind of a very very close to pest control, but not a pest control. If we as a pest control uh, operators uh, will take over that, and we are fighting against the cleaning company and the hygiene company. Yes. But I think as pest control people, we are very flexible. We have uh, trained uh, personnel, and we can combine disinfection and pest mm-hmm. control all together. And, and I can say that uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, as you know, trying to spread all the knowledge that we have about disinfection, product, uh, technology, uh, as an open service, as a free service to any PCO uh, in, in, the, in the world. And I think that uh, we can join together because we are much smaller than the hygiene and the cleaning company. Yes. But we have, I think we are much more professional. And flexible, 100%. Exactly. And we can, we can run much faster. Much, um, yeah. Uh, I think that all the marketing, uh, uh, all the marketing campaign that pest control companies start with, you can see them that we are really aggressive in this market. Uh, but I think that there's a lack of uh, information for a lot of pest control and, do, and they're doing mistakes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm more than open to share everything that we have. You know, we're not uh, we colleagues. We are not uh, uh, fighting each other. Yeah. And there are good, there are good uh, uh, practice uh, in, uh, in many, many companies. And there's a lot of good products. And I think that's faster that we build a good service, uh, a, a, a service tool to, to uh, help our customer. Uh, we'll get, we can get better business and it will help us to cross this very, very difficult time. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure too. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. I, I, mean, I can speak from my perf- uh, personal experience from you. You're always a, a big helper, and you, you see the bigger picture, and never uh, uh, you've never been competitive. So I can I can just uh, ask anybody to, uh, who's uh, seeing this video to uh, search up Ronan Amishai on uh, LinkedIn mm-hmm. and send him a message. He's definitely going to help. And you can yeah, and you can share whatever I send you. It's, as I said, it's open to everyone. Cool. Um, I don't see. I don't see. I think that sharing information, uh, yeah. as we try to do it, it's, will help everyone. And I think that if mm. we see ourselves as the pioneers of disinfection services mm. uh, in our countries, it will help us to get better and faster in the way that we are today. Because yeah. no doubt that we are dealing with a very big problem. With a very big, uh, we are getting to a recession time. Yeah. Uh, but I think that uh, as as a lot of articles right wrote before. Pest control is a kind of a solid business that can run through a, a hard time, and, and and we've been there. We've yeah. been in a few places already. I'm older than you. 2008. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm older than you. Do I even remember? <laughs> Maybe like five years, Ronan, in maximum. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, my last question, Ronan. Um, my last question would be: um, As you're uh, one or two years older than me, how do you and your staff organize remote working, and how do you personally feel about remote working? First of all, I'm loving it. I have to say, I'm talking to you from <laughs> my home. I'm still continue to work while we're talking. So, uh, uh, remote technology <laughs> is helping us a lot. And I think that, uh, first of all, what we did, we divide our team in the office. We have 22 personnel in our offices. We divide them to two teams, A and B. And, we, and they're working, A team working on Sunday, B team working on Monday, and none of them is working on Tuesday. <laughs> so uh, as, uh, all of them working at home. We build a network that allows us to work and getting, uh, uh, getting the information flow. And I think that everything is really... I, I'm loving it. I think that, as you said before, uh, some of that going to stay after that. I think that uh, sure. some of that, we just took a very big uh, uh, offices uh, <laughs> space lately, and I'm not sure that we need that anymore. <laughs> I am with you. And also, if you want to be attractive as a, as a company, I mean, we have uh, a lot of our staff also is, is, is very young, you know, Generation Y. I don't think they, they're going to accept any um, uh, company as, as a place to work that does not offer home office. I think no one doubt. or two or three are even fully remote uh, servicing. I mean, we work with freelancers all around the world. We have people that cut our videos from another country and people that advise us from another country. So why wouldn't we have staff from another country working or another city or region that's not no traveling to the office every day, right? Yeah. yeah, the only thing that I'm really missing is the 
is a traveling part of my business. I know you love to travel. Yeah, that's <laughs> over for now. <laughs> All my mileage is gone away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be downgraded in your American Express. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a really, uh, this is the only bad thing that happened. No, no, but a uh, little bit serious. Yeah, I think that uh, if we will be smart enough, we'll take what good, what good came from this situation and we'll be able to be more flexible. Sure. And I think that uh, uh, happy employees and all our employees, I think, I cannot, I cannot speak for themselves, but all, all our employees are very happy working at home. They're happy to go to the office when they can, by the way, to yeah. leave the house a bit and leave the kids and come yeah. to the office. So flexibility is the name of the game here. And again, it's, uh, I think it's better than everything uh, that we did before. And I'm optimistic as a basic. This is my roots to be better. Same here, same here. You know me. We we can change, we won't change, and I, I so, really uh, love it. Uh, flexibility is the game here that we're playing, and I think pest control and pest managers around the world can profit from the crisis and show how important our industry is. We have to be too, we have to be too stupid to not to earn from this uh, crisis. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, very, very big benefit. Uh, no doubt. We need to be patient, but it's coming. Yes. Full force ahead. Ronan, thank you so much. I think some really, really cool insights for everybody to see. And I hope a lot of people are going to see what you just said because I think it was really valuable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy.